because I, I play the Karelan up in the bell tower. People in the community of Gävle, they uh, said I'm the man in the tower. We have about 100,000 inhabitants for the moment. We have a very famous uh, hockey team, then also a very famous goat. In the Christmas time, I look uh, out of the window and I will be inspired when I see the, the goat. You know, a couple of years ago, there was a man from the United States. He, he, he thought it was okay to burn the, the goat. So he put fire on the goat and, and uh, then he got uh, to Yale. But I think he should be ashamed, you know. Christmas goat is representing a tradition, a proudness, a piece of um, happiness in a dark, dark time. It started as a marketing strategy and became successful. So um, the year after, they built it again. And I think because it was burnt the first year, it meant something. And the last 50 years, the goat has been burned for 29 times. The goat has a long history and many years, of course, not so happy. Uh, history. A lot of accidents. Once it was a car driving down the goat. Once it was a Santa Claus who jump in to the goat and get it to fire. I'm the mayor of Gävle commune and I think when uh, the goat burns down I can feel in the whole town that the people are sad. They don't talk to each other in the bus in the morning. And uh, I can't explain why they are doing it. Sometimes I think they are drunk and don't think at all. Sometimes I think perhaps it's money it's because you can bet on the goat. And I think that is awful. The last goat builder, he was... Uh allergic to the straw. So then they came to me and asked me if I want to build it. We start in uh, August when we buy some uh, wood. Uh, and after that, we start to uh, build a skeleton up. From the last harvest, uh, we take the straw because it's the best. It's fresh and uh, fresh and nice. Uh, I have uh, built the goat three times and uh, twice it's burned down. And that feels sad, very sad, because when they burn it down, they ruin the Christmas feeling for everybody, especially the, the kids. But uh, yeah, I don't like them. Every year in Gavle, we are thinking about how to burn down the goat. And while those town businessmen think it's a tradition they started, it's not. It's something us Swedes have been doing for centuries. 
So build your IKEA shelves and Christmas mascots. Sip schnapps in your polite society and drive cautiously through your sheltered lives. But always know that your older self, hidden by the darkness that is part of you, is waiting by to burn it all to hell. This is the darkest time in the year here in Sweden. The sun goes down very early and goes up very late, so it's many hours that are dark here. And therefore, we need a lot of light. And in Advent time, we start the tradition with this goat here in Gävle. So we, say, we tell ourselves and all our people, it's time to start preparations for Christmas because we need a light. People were worshipping light in some ways before Christianity, because it was dark even then. It was mean to make people to go more to the south part of the city for shopping. I want to look at the goat, to take a coffee and shopping, and take a photo, and it was really successed for the they who run business. We make some uh, gingerbread that looks like the goat, and uh, I think it's not uh, good for the shopping when it burns down. Every kids are a little bit sad when it burns down because you have you have connection to it. You're walking around every day and you get a happy feeling in your body and also it brings something more to Christmas. And uh, it's something you talk about when you come home as a kid, uh, how big it was and how fast it was. And it comes with some kind of myth. I don't know, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's just something old, something... I don't know, it feels a little bit like, like us, like the town. It's, it's uh, connected to us somehow. Burning the, the Yavle goat, it could, could be part of a collective memory as such, um, where people do this because it's part of a, a, a longer tradition within themselves to create some sort of balance between this darkness and, and light. Because um, the sun is um, its a source of life. Without the sun, we cannot exist. So of course, it's been important during the early ages also for the sun to, to return, um, for the harvest to even grow. It's a, it's a battle of traditions. Ours goes back to the beginning of time, when the gods created our world from fire. While well, their cute little custom was created by some ad company some 50 years ago to help sell their capitalist Christmas mascot. Every year, they build their Trojan horse, and every year, they are shocked when Troy gets burned to the ground. When I talk to the children about the gold, we just wait and see, and we hope for it to stand all the way to Christmas, but if it's going to happen that someone will burn it down. And we talked about it with the kids because they think it's sad it is, it, that the goat isn't there anymore. And we're talking about doing right and wrong things and how to do the, the right thing and what that is. So uh, I tell them the story that long ago in Sweden, children and people were believing that it was a goat coming at Christmas with presents 
and he was uh, banging on the door. Then I was a little bit afraid of him as well because the, the goat was not always the nice one. So, <laughs> so if, if you've been bad, you don't have any presents. So, hmm. I think that this goat uh, survived only 12 times of uh, this uh, 50 years. I think it's only three or four people who have been uh, prosecuted for this. Burning down the goat uh, in the Swedish Criminal Code, chapter 12, paragraph one, it could be uh, prison up to four uh, years. And the most common uh, penalty is fine. And the fine is uh, about 80,000 Swedish crowns. There's no uh, possibility for me to make a, a, a verdict uh, beside the word. We follow the law, nothing else. It's not possible. We have an historical fire in this town and uh, I know it was 9,000 people living here in the city of Gävle, and approximately 80% was left without houses. There's always a risk when a goat is on fire that it can spread. And we have the old town quite near where the goat's standing, so that's always a worry. My whole occupation has been based on putting fires out and helping people, and these people don't help anybody. Like the one, not last year, but the year before. He used some kind of petrol, I think, and he got it on himself. So the man who started the goat fire was burning himself. So I think he got a good lesson there. There is, a, they say, a secret goat burning club. And uh, there was a rumor too that the firemen here in the town have a secret society that also was burning the goat down. But uh, I don't believe in that rumor. I have never heard such a silly thing. Before the false light of Jesus shone on our country, we here in the north, we worship fire. It kept us warm during long winters and, and it burned down our enemies. And in its scorched wake, we planted seeds so we might live another year. In the northernmost part of our world, there is only one sunrise, one sunset a year. From spring to autumn, the sun makes its way slowly across the sky, and in the winter, well, in the winter, you pray for the sun to return. Well, if you look at the Gävle goat as a symbol, you can, you can see both the very nice Christian symbol of the Christmas goat, but also the very devilish side, if you like. Um, in many of the legends that are around here, the devil is often disguised, but he has a, a, the hoof of a goat, uh, and that's how you can recognize him. Um, 350 years ago, we had this boy in Gävle who uh, accused his mother, among others, for witchcraft. Well, and telling these stories, how he was abducted to Blåkulla, the, the land of the, the devil, along with uh, these witches, um, whether they were having intercourse with the devil and so on. Uh, his mother, she was um, sent to trial and she was um, sentenced to death, beheaded and burned at the stake. We have a very special uh, incident with the goat, and it was very tragic. And 
it was a man who first he killed a man and after a little time he also burned the gold and we didn't know it was the same man but when we talked with him he told us that he was the one who had burned down the gold and uh, uh, it was a sad story but he was out after, after five six years and now i think he have family and live like a normal life It was the 4th of December in 2005. Two young men, one of them was dressed like a gingerbread man and the other one like a Santa Claus. And it's difficult to get the goat, so they get the goat on fire with uh, fire arrows. And um, <gasps> the goat burned down. mightiest of all our warriors, Thor. He was carried through the sky on a chariot that was pulled by two goats, and their hooves made the sound of thunder. night, the hungry god would throw them both into fire and eat their flesh. And every morning, the goats would be resurrected so he could ride again. A burning sun across our Nordic sky. Yesterday, the sun shone for four hours. Only a sacrifice in fire will bring it back. The gold represents love, light, and happiness. It gives hope for the people in our town. When the goat burns down, you feel like the darkness has won. And I don't want to have that feeling. I would like to say no to the darkness, and I will say, we must take it back, the light, again. When I looked down from my tower, I am uh, very, very angry when I see black, black goat. And, <laughs> you know, it's uh, sad for every people here after what's happened. So I will play my uh, favorite uh, Christmas song in minor, not in major, because I th think it's a symbol of the sadness uh, many people is, is feeling now. Even it's, it was a, a terrible thing what's, that's happened. Uh, the sun is still shining and the sea is still blue. And I think uh, in a year from now, a new goat will rise from the ashes. Mm -hmm. 